Hello, welcome to Rudy's Electronics Lab. Today I installed a new firmware update of the Sigland SDS 2000X Plus oscilloscope and there were a couple of interesting things there, including a whole new analysis uh, mode and that's what I want to look into with you today. I also kind of noticed, I cannot do AB comparison but the screen looks a bit more snappy to me. I think what we're getting here is the, uh, the optimized UI that they list in the firmware changes. And let's take a look at the old UI, it's, it's over here and this is the, the new AI. And I'm going to put them next to each other. And to be frank with you, I really like the older UI, the font. It was a bit smooth and nicer to see, maybe less sharp but more pleasant to look up than the, uh, than the new one. And also when I make uh, screenshots, um, actually when I make a screenshot I don't get the confirmation anymore, but he's actually making the screenshot, I, I just tested that. But that's of course not what I, I want to make the video about uh, today. I want to look at the new analysis function. And we got a new serial signal uh, test mode. And so this is not serial decode. <coughs> we already had serial decode for a long time of course, these are all serial decode protocols here. But now we got a new set of analysis and it's called the serial signal test. And that is testing the integrity of a, um, of a serial uh, the coded signal in terms of the amplitude and the timing aspects and, and everything. So let's today take a quick look for those people that don't have this scope or uh, perhaps have this scope but have not installed the, uh, the software update yet. So in order to do that we're going to need some, some, some signals. I'm going to do some um, I square C signals and I'm going to take them from this little um, development board that I got um, right here. This is a um, Rigel uh, demo board. It's called the uh, DS6K demo board and it generates a whole lot of signals. We've got I square C, we got SPI, we got CAN, we got parallel stuff, we got like a whole lot of interesting stuff here. So it's a, it's a rather useful board for this type of, uh, of purposes of, uh, of today. Now, let's return to the oscilloscope. I already connected up the board and I'm going to configure two channels. So the, um, the first channel is the, uh, the clock channel of the I square C interface. So I got it coming in um, right here. It's at one volt per division. So one, two, three, three and a half, three point three, three and a half volts per uh, per division. And we see here what is going on in the uh, protocol. Just fine. And then we also got a channel two, which is the uh, the data SDA, and it's also the same magnitude, three point three um, volts or uh, or so. So basically, our signals are ready to be um, to be analyzed. And we can move here to the um, to the protocol analysis uh, mode here and see what we got. I square C, going to put it on. I've got a couple of options here. Bus setup, I'm going to start here, and this is basically the the cabling of the channels. That is fine. I square C speed is standard. The bus voltage is 3.3. Yeah, I just checked that, and that's that is what I actually got on my hands now. Parameter setup. This is interesting, we get to see here the whole set of parameter that, the, uh, that, that we're going to be testing again. So we got minimum and maximum values and later on we're going to see a pass or a fill when our implementation actually meets these parameters. But we can also change the, uh, the, the range here that, uh, that the testing is done against. Next thing is the, the test setup. We can have it stopping on fill. Um, okay. We can have a screenshot. I think that's a screenshot on fail. Unfortunately, there's nothing in the manual about this, but this is just my, my speculation. We do auto test mode. We can also do something manual. I don't know what's going to happen manual here. One test time should be fine. And we're going to start the test. And this is going to take quite a, um, a moment, but bear with me. He's asking me if the, the probes are properly configured and uh, whether there's any attenuation in the probe. Well, I'm, I'm sure everything is good. So there we go, we're going to run the, the protocol and I'm going to keep it running for a moment so you can look at it or you can skip the video if you prefer to.
All right, and now we uh, arrive at the um, at the test results. So we just spent, I think, exactly two minutes where the scope was doing all this type of uh, of testing. And here we see the result of our analysis. We see the um, the results here, and we see mostly passes and two fails. And we see some details here um, about, in this case, the clock signal frequency. Um, I think that's what he's also complaining about at some point, and a overall fail test here. Um, looks pretty impressive, I should say, and so we can click basically on, on, on these screenshots here and get a, um, a, full, uh, a full overview. I just lost it here. Yeah, I'm back at the, um, at the results. Um, we can make um, a screenshot, obviously, of these results. Um, but we can also later write the reports away to a, a file. I'll show you that in a, in a moment. So let me see where we got our, our fills. Apparently we got a fill here on the one above that clock signal low level time. So apparently that should be within certain boundaries and according to scope it should be more than 4.7 microseconds. Uh, but in reality it was at uh, 3.8 to 3.9 microseconds. So um, there's a fill there. And there's a fill here about something related to the clock frequency as well. And I think we got one more fill, start signal, whole time. So apparently against this parameter that at least the signal was testing against, it comes to the conclusion that it was a fill on the, the signals that come from my, my little test uh, board here. Now, well, that's interesting to see. Let's close this screen once more. And we can go to reporting facilities here. So we can say here, who's the operator, who's the device, it's a Rigel. Looks like a new keyboard to me, by the way. Am I wrong in that? Rigel, and that was the, um, the DS6K. I don't think I can do any space here. That's just fine. And... I can preview the report over here, but I can also go to the file manager and tell him to store it on my, uh, my drive right over, um, over here. Save as RD2. Over. Now I think it is uh, saved. That's not a very clear uh, confirmation of this, but I think we're going to be good. I saved it as, as HTML, by the way. It could also be an HTML. He's often jumping out of this. You can also preview the report here. And I think it's taking him some time to make it. Yeah, and now I think he's just showing us the HTML file and this is actually the report that is saved to the disk. It's a number of screenshots, there are some tables which say pass or, or fill etc. Um, yeah, looks interesting. Now, here you have it, so an entirely new analysis type of mode. It's quite interesting that this was, uh, was added as a, uh, a regular firmware type of update. I appreciate that if manufacturers still do this, even if a device is already on the market for a while. And just finally, so we can do this for um, I square C, but we can also do it for, uh, for spy buses. But um, yeah, for time reasons, I'm not gonna, gonna do this as well in this uh, video. So, hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.